to the uh, charging system at this time. Generator, the alternator, the stator, the magneto, the flywheel, the starter drive, that whole assembly. That's what we're getting into today. We've got eight millimeters around this cover here. We've got our starter we're gonna pull off. I'm gonna show you how that works. But we're gonna start by removing all of the eight millimeters around this stator cover. We've got all of those eight millimeters off. They appear to all be the exact same size. No need to worry about which order that goes in. We'll set those aside. This cover should just pop off. You can see we've had uh, some slight damage to this cover. Probably not going to be usable. Not sure what happened here. There's some JB Weld on there. We are pulling now the stator off. We have our uh, wire here, our, our harness that we need to take off as well. Otherwise, we're not going to get very far with it. So set that uh, in our other hand. Pull this off. There is going to be some magnetic pull to this, some force there, so you wanna make sure you got a good hold on it. This stator appears to be in really good condition, uh, even though this cover here has seen better days. So stator looks good, we'll test that. A little bit of dings up there, but nothing major at all. Uh, for the most part, that coil is complete and with no issues. And we've got our flywheel here. We've got our starter drive back here. We've got our starter motor right here. So I'm gonna pull this flywheel. That'll allow us to get into this starter drive a little bit easier. Uh, you do need to have a special puller for this flywheel. I'll put a link below for that. 14 millimeter bolt to remove this. And it's just regular threads. You've got uh, just a regular bolt on there. I, sorry, a specialty bolt, uh, but it's just regular threaded. You've got a spacer there. Make sure that that spacer is included when you're going back together. Flywheel puller giveaway. So we've got this bolt here off. We've got it loosened up and removed it. I'm actually gonna take and put it back down in there. I wanted to show you what it was like to pull that off of there. Now, what I'm gonna do today is remove this flywheel. What you need is a special tool. It looks just like this. And I'm gonna offer you a chance to win this puller. Stick around for details. So we're gonna spin that on. We're gonna leave about a quarter inch play there. Now we're gonna grab our special puller, make sure it's got the right thread pitch. Make sure it's got enough length right here. Make sure this bolt is long enough. Make sure that this diameter is long enough and make sure you've got a good high quality steel puller to do this job. If you've got a cheapo one uh, from Knockoff China, you wanna make sure that you don't damage this flywheel. This flywheel is, I mean, I'm just gonna guess between five and $600. You do not wanna damage it by using a cheapo tool. So make sure you've got a good one. I'll put a link below, but I'm offering you a chance to win this one. I'm gonna to get to 100 comments on this video. When I get to 100 comments, I will pick one person out of those comments to send a flywheel puller to. Now, if I see one person comment 100 times, I hope one other person comments because, uh, they're going to get the flywheel puller. <laughs> I'm not going to give this to the person that comments 99 times uh, or the person that comments 100 times. I want 100 people, and maybe if you do it once or twice, that's just fine. But I don't want you doing it more than twice. One person out of a, the first 100 comments is going to receive this flywheel puller free of charge, free shipping, and high-quality steel, and the puller to do the trick. Now, you're gonna take this puller, you're gonna screw it onto your flywheel. Make sure you've got it going on the right direction. Make sure you're not cross-threading anything. That kind of defeats the purpose of using a special tool like this if you damage your flywheel while using this special tool. Now, that being said, I'm curious if anybody else has found a better way to remove a flywheel off of the motorcycle. I'm gonna tell you, there's not a better way, not a, not a way that's going to allow you to keep your flywheel and your crankcase. I can see how somebody could get some pry bars in here and go Hulk mode on it, beat on it. Okay, you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to salvage your flywheel or your crankcase. So, any other way uh, than using a puller? Let me know that in the comments below. We're gonna run this bolt down in there. We've got a 19 millimeter uh, socket here. We're gonna run this down. And remember, you don't have a whole lot of give there, so. You can maybe see it in the video. We can for sure see it with our naked eye here, but it pops that flywheel up. You know that your flywheel is loose at this time. The reason why you can't pull it all the way off is because you actually have that bolt still on there holding it on. The reason why we had to put that bolt in there, if I haven't touched on that yet, is because this bolt right here is not long enough. It's gonna thread, it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna thread all the way down through your flywheel here, and it's supposed to hit that crankshaft is what it's supposed to be doing. 
uh, but because of that large hole in that crankshaft, if your puller is a little bit small, it's going to run down in there. It could potentially damage those threads. That is why I put this bolt on there. That is why I use the correct tools. So again, make sure you guys comment below so that you could possibly win that flywheel puller. I will announce that winner at some point on one of my videos on YouTube. I will make sure that that person knows they've won uh, when that time comes. So 100 comments, make sure I get there. This right here is a limiter gear or a starter gear or a starter drive. We've got your starter motor right here. These gears on this starter here will turn these smaller, finer tooth gears right here. These larger tooth gears will actually uh, turn your flywheel starter drive gear, the gear that's on behind your flywheel. It's got a one-way bearing. I'll show you that when I pull that flywheel completely off, but this gear should only turn one direction, and it does. The other direction, when you hit that starter, will actually turn your motor over, so it's going to be spinning this direction counterclockwise. This direction here, it's not going to start anything. If your bearing's good, and it should be, you'll be spinning your motor over this way, starting your, your motorcycle. So make sure that this gear is good. Make sure that the teeth on your starter are good. Make sure that uh, the teeth on your one-way gear here are good. So setting that starter drive aside, we've got your flywheel here, and you heard a little, little tick, something falling out. Uh, you wanna make sure and grab that before it goes down into your bottom end. Here's your one-way gear that I was telling you about, or the one-way bearing. And then this right here is the gear. And this gear right here, if you set that on there and spin it, it'll only spin one direction. The other direction is gonna spin that whole flywheel. So make sure you've got a good one of those. I did actually drop that keeper down into our crankcase. Thankfully, I can still see it. It's right there. Grab it with a magnet. Make sure you keep hand, hand on this. And then make sure when you're going back together, you slide that down into place there. To put this flywheel back on, slide that into place there. Tighten that bolt up. I like to lock tight it just so uh, you uh, are sure that that bolt isn't going to come out. That flywheel is spinning, spinning at an incredible rate, actually the same rate as your crankshaft. So you know how many times and how quick that spins over. It's a lot. Trust me on that. So next we're going over to your water pump. We've got your impeller under this cover here. We've got an eight millimeter bolt we need to remove. A couple of them actually, uh, but most of them are already removed. First of all, we've got an Allen right here that we need to remove. And I believe it's a five millimeter Allen. And this will allow us to get in uh, and, and turn this tube. That way we can get into that eight millimeter bolt there to remove our uh, water pump cover or our impeller cover. So water lines here, this water line goes up to the cylinder head. This water line here goes to the radiator from the radiator. I can't remember which one. And then we've got some other lines as well. So. Set that bolt aside, we'll remove that coolant line, and we could actually just turn it to get that uh, eight millimeter bolt out, but we are just gonna turn it, to tell you the truth. I'm not looking to spill coolant all over the place. So, got that eight millimeter removed. There's actually two more that we've removed already. I guess I ended up spilling coolant all over. So, there we go there. There is your coolant cover, your water pump cover, your impeller cover. Uh, your cooling line. So that is the ticket there. You want to make sure that these hoses are in good shape. This is obviously an aluminum hose. Uh, not a lot there that can go bad um, as far as uh, dry rot, but these seals that are down in here, these O-rings, they can go bad. So you want to make sure that those are good, aren't leaking anywhere. Water pump here, the impeller. Let's remove that. Be careful. When you're doing this, that you don't take your thumb off. If you're gonna hang on to it, I'd be very, very careful. Use some heavy duty gloves because you could destroy your finger by turning that uh, too quick when you're not paying attention. What I don't like to do is stick pliers on here because these are aluminum fins. They break very, very easily. I'm a little bit leery of using a finger as well. I just know the power of my impact and it's not all that great. I do love DeWalt. Their power is uh, in the 3 8 impact is nothing to write home about. So I knew I was stronger than that impact there. You just want to make sure you don't catch it off guard. Uh, you've got a water pump seal right here. These have a tendency of going out and uh, we will get down and replace that uh, in a separate video. But you've got an opportunity here to pull this off. So we're going to do that. You've got to make sure you've got a good O-ring on behind there. And then you've got a couple more parts here that we can remove all a part of the actual oil pump on this one. So not to be confused with the uh, water pump. So oil pump here, 
and we've got a, a pin that you want to make sure you don't lose. That sits right down in that groove there. This pin, you want to make sure you don't lose that. That fits down right into that orifice there. So that is the uh, oil pump. That's part of your water pump. So don't get the two confused. Actually, it'd be very hard to mix those up. We've got a uh, sensor down here. I'm guessing this is the gear position sensor. Don't quote me on that because I haven't been to the other side yet to see what that looks like. We've got a sensor. How about I just stick with that? I'm not totally sure what sensor it is at this point. 14 millimeter. Remove that sensor. Sensor is here. So pretty common sensor. I'm not sure you could pick one of these up at your automotive store, but you can probably pick one up at any Kawasaki dealership. Comment below if you've got a good Kawasaki dealership in your area. I like to hear good dealerships doing good jobs. So I'm moving that motor over now. We're actually gonna to move to the other side. I'm going to pull this starter assembly while I'm here with eight millimeter socket. Two bolts there, and then go ahead and remove your starter. Should have an O-ring right there. Should be in good condition. If it's not, replace it. You don't want water coming from in this area here, dropping down into your stator assembly and your flywheel. It's gonna create quite a problem there. So, starter feels good. I'll double check that, I'll test it out. I'll show you how to do that. We have got our clutch cover on this side. I'm gonna remove a handful of these bolts. We're gonna tip this motor up. That way you guys can see what I'm doing. <laughs> 